stage. He's taken up the BJ to send to Temple for the talk there. So I have to deputize for him as the MC today. And also be the video guy. Uh, good evening, Bhante's, especially Bhante Dr. Chandima, um, brothers and sisters in Dhamma. Uh, before we start, as always, if you have your headphones on, please put it to silent on the vibrator mode so that we do not disrupt the talk while it's uh, ongoing. Uh, we are privileged to have Bhante Chan Dr. Chandima, C. Chandima, uh, G. Chandima, sorry, as our speaker today under the Dhammadana series. Um, let me just give you a brief outline. I'm sure you have heard of it yesterday, but I think there could be some of you who are new who don't know Bhante. <coughs> now, Bhante Dr. Chandima Tero is a resident Buddhist monk at the Ottawa Theravada Buddhist Center on Bihara in Canada. He had served at many Theravada Buddhist centers in Canada as well. Now, Bhante earned uh, his BA with first class honors in 2008 from the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, majoring in Sanskrit and minoring in Pali and Buddhist philosophy. In 2015, he earned his PhD in Sanskrit from the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, uh, Sri Lanka, which is for his thesis, <coughs> an annotated translation into English of the Ratmala Vahadana with a critical introduction with a critical introduction, uh, with a critical introduction. He has lectured in Sanskrit at the University of British Columbia, Canada, the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, and also the Buddhist and Pali University of Sri Lanka. He has served as the Theravada Buddhist chaplain at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver. He's, uh, he was also a research fellow at the Center for Studies in Religion and Society at the University of Victoria and collaborated at the Nagoya National College of Technology in Japan. <coughs> uh, Bhante presents a fluent and articulate, articulate rendition of the original pa uh, Pali Suttas at his YouTube channel, Authentic Buddhism. I don't know whether it's working, Bhante, but <laughs> we'll try again huh, today. They are keeping to the true meaning without distorting the words of the Buddha, the original words of the Buddha. So without um, wasting much time, I'd like to invite Bhante to start this evening's talk. everything karma. So this is a very uh, controversial topic across um, religious, philosophical, even non-religious, non-philosophical traditions too. So before we're going to talk about whether everything is karma or not, we need to, uh, you know, kind of look at what karma is in the real stage. So what is karma? Intentional actions, thoughts, and words. But somebody may argue that actions and uh, words come from the intentional thoughts. Right? But basically speaking, uh, it is uh, intentional when, it, when there is an intentional action, word, and a thought, and that is regarded, considered as karma in the Buddhist teachings. So, because, so that there is a higher chance uh, for many people to misuse this concept. Because somebody may run over someone, by vehicle, and then uh, 
when he was questioned by the law enforcement or something like that, that person may say that uh, I was distracted, I was not intentional. So that means there is a sort of like this free pass thinking, you know. So because karma is intentional uh, in the teachings, there is a higher chance of for many to misuse this concept. It is basically conscience of uh, beings. So, uh, what is karma in the Buddhist teachings actually? Where do we find karma in the broader context? In order to find that place of karma, we need to uh, take a look at some of the sutras. In one sutra, Buddha talks about karma with other contemporary uh, you know, beliefs. So he was talking about three basic beliefs at that time. The first one called Isra Nimmana Hetuvat. Now this belief is all is, is actually uh, existing even now. That means uh, there is someone, Almighty, who takes care of our own karmas and he is the one who supervises and then uh, commands our life. So that is called Isarnimana Hetuad. And then there was another belief that was there at that time that was called, even it is existing now, Pupe Kata Hetuad. Fatalism. Fatalism means that uh, every circumstances that we are going through in our life are direct consequences of the previous karma. Maybe in this life, maybe <coughs> in the past lives. That's called Pupekata Hetuada, which many Buddhists also uh, mistakenly, mistakenly believe this. And there was another belief that Buddha was talking about. It's called Ahetu Apachewa. Ahetu Apachevad means everything happens uh, as a random thing. Hmm? Yeah, ad hocly and uh, as a random thing. Right? So Buddha says, Buddha, he denies all these three uh, uh, beliefs. So uh, if I am to uh, you know, tell you the three beliefs that Buddha denied, Isra Nimman Ahetu Adan. Uh, where Buddha describes that uh, people had a belief that there is an almighty God, superior God, someone like that, who supervises and uh, controls and commands uh, future, past, present of anybody in the world, in the universe. And then uh, this thing called Pupekata uh, Hetuada, that means every uh, you know experience, uh, pain, suffering, uh, you know joy, whatever happiness. They are all uh, direct results of uh, consequences of the past uh, karmas. There's no connection to this life karma. And then Buddha denied that too. And the last belief that Buddha was telling the people was Ahetu uh, Apachewa. Everything happens as, a, as an ad hoc, uh, random thing. And then he presented his uh, understanding. And he said, Karma is not a linear thing. It's not a it's not a set linear teaching uh, where in which people misunderstand. If karma is set linear, linear means like it, it is very uh, determined, constructive thing. Then where is the place for our willpower? Where is the place for our thinking? But even at that place, do not misunderstand. Willpower can do everything. So we have to take a look at this uh, messy context with the Buddhist teachings today. Now, in the <coughs> in the first four Nikayas, uh, the books that were actually compiled by the senior monks after Buddha's uh, death, there are a lot of teachings where we find the importance of willpower. 
importance of neutralizing the bad karma, mitigating bad karma, as well as in the Abhidhamma we find the five niyamas, cosmic laws, right? And uh, that's in the Dhamma Sangani, a commentary to the Dhamma Sangani, which is called Atta Sangani, you find the five uh, cosmic laws. But if we take a look at the uh, place of willpower in the first Nikaya, first four Nikayas, we find very interesting uh, examples. There was one Brahmin who came to see the Buddha, and then he was denying by telling the Buddha, so I don't believe in, uh, you know, thinking, I, uh, you know, uh, willpower, decision making, uh, diligence, and all these positive, uh, you know, uh, stuff. He was actually telling him, the Buddha that I don't believe in any of these things. And the Buddha said, see how prepared are you to talk about these things? So you were preparing so much before you coming home to discuss these things with me, at least to deny these things in the first place, right? So if there is no willpower, then how come you were prepared to talk about these things to, with me, right? If you can decide, if you can plan something ahead, that means there is a willpower. But the problem is whether we know the place of willpower and how it plays in the mainstream uh, understanding. That's the problem. So there are such examples in the first four Nikayas whereby Buddha talked about the significance of the willpower. Now when we go to Atthasalini, which is the commentary to uh, Dhamsangani Abhidhamma book, we find five cosmic laws. They are cosmic, universal. I think you, probably you may know these five. Uttaniyama, Bijaniyama, Dhammaniyama, Kambaniyama, Chittaniyama. Right? So they are the five Niyamas. I, I think those of you who might uh, have uh, not exposed to these five uh, may have a hard time in understanding what I said <laughs> in Pali. So I'm going to explain to you what they are. So this teaching says, every circumstance, circumstance happens as a result of one of these, or two of these, three of these, four of these, maybe five of these. So you can't single out. This experience which I've been going through is a direct thing from one niyam. So what is Uttu niyam? It's the law regarding the non-living matters. What are the non-living non matters that we can see in the world? Disasters. I think these days there is a tsunami happening in Indonesia. A lot of people die. Right? Sometimes even there is warning, but there are some, uh, uh, you know, uh, situations where they, they can't get uh, informed by the authorities. Right? So anyway, natural disasters, so all, all kind of corruptions. Flooding. And uh, what, what else? Seasonal, huh? seasonal, change. seasonal changes. Yeah. Right? So, winter, spring, spring. summer, uh, autumn, autumn, which is called fall. Everything is falling. Here we are falling <laughs> in the autumn. <laughs> We're catching, uh, you know, cold, uh, fever, right? Anyway, so these changes. So are those changes or disasters having any connection to karma? I think people are making them karma, you see? Hundred people died from tsunami. They were really unlucky people, like, some may, can, some may uh, come up with an argument like that, right? But Buddha says in the teachings that uh, non-living matters are non-living matters. They have not, nothing to do with karma. So that context is very special. So all the seasonal changes, including uh, natural disasters, and they all are uh, representing one law in the world, or in the universe. What about the evolution of the world, right? And dissolution of the world, right? Universe. And 
those big changes in the universe, they all pertain to non-living matter. So they have nothing to do with karma. Okay? So do not interpret them as being karma. But the thing is, as I told you, there could be a mix-up. The first one, non-living matters, and maybe the karma. Right? There could be a mix-up. But there may not be a mix-up too, at certain points. So anyway, Uthuniyam means non-living matter, law of non-living matters. Second, Uthubijaniyam. So Bija means living matters. What are they? <coughs> Even the genetics. Now the scientists are actually arguing about the genetics. Genetics. Whatever the things that are going uh, with genetics. What about things happening with the germination process? Uh, in a tree, sprouts, flowers, right? Whatever the things happening uh, with, the, with the process of a plant, they all regarding, they all pertain to Bijanya, right? Which is called uh, uh, law on, on uh, living matters. That's why Buddha said to the monks, do not, do not cut the trees. Right? But the trees are defilements. Vanam chindata ma rukkam. Vanam chindata. Cut down the, cut down the uh, trees of uh, defilements, but not the trees. In Dhammapada. Vanato jayati vaya. Chetva vanamcha vanatancha. Uh, and he was, uh, you know, saying a different idea. Actually. So it, basically, he was saying, "Do not cut down, do not cut these trees," because he believes there is this living thing going on uh, in the trees. That's why when you keep cursing the tree, trees are getting really upset. When you keep uh, blessing the tree, they are really happy. And you know that the trees are. Uh, exchanging uh, food too. Right? You know that? When there's a small tree with a big tree, the small tree is receiving food from the big tree. This is pretty nice. The only things that we don't know, <laughs> that's the problem. <coughs> right? Anyway, so Virginia. So anything that happens with this germination or process of the plant has nothing to do with But what about someone is actually walking and a big tree is actually falling down on, on him? That's a different thing actually. Right? Maybe it could be the end of the tree too. But at the same time, this individual was actually walking on the road. Maybe a mix-up of the Bijaniyama plus Karmaniyama. Maybe Bijaniyama plus Dhammaniyama too, which I think. Maybe Chaitanya. Anyway, so Vijayam means law on uh, living matters. Now we are coming to Kamanya. See where does Kama, you know, uh, play its role. Now a lot of people think that karma is mainly decided by the particular action, thought or word itself. But Buddha says, it's not. He says, now a lot of people don't even talk about the Vipaka side. So Kama has to be talk, discussed with Vipaka. What is Vipaka? What is Kama? Kama is just the action, thought or the word. Vipaka is the effect or the result. That's the most important thing that we should talk about. Okay? So when an action or a word or a thought getting processed into uh, a result or an effect, it has, it has to go through with the mat mat maturation actually. When it is going through the maturation, there are a lot of things happening. So the first thing is the person who commits the bad action or the good action. Let's say there are two individuals, three individuals, X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z, they are doing the same action. But do you think they get the same results? 
No. So then individuality affects in the first place. But the same action, same word, maybe same thought. Number two, circumstances where in which those individuals are executing that particular action. Right? So these circumstances are really different from one person to the other person. Right? So X might do that action, word, thought, in a different situation. Maybe the bad mood, right? People are getting moody these days at different times. I'm not in the mood, don't talk about it. I can't eat from it. But somebody else might do the same action, word, thought, at the same time, with a different good mood, positive mood. Now see, there's a good chance of having a different result. Right? So, as I told you, actions, thoughts, words, themselves do not create the last final result. So they have to go through with the individuality and then the circumstances where in which those individuals are executing that particular action. Right? Now it's pretty same, like, let's say, uh, uh, a teacher is going to give an essay to students. I'm uh, guessing kind of a topic. A disruptive student should be taught together, agree or disagree. So, maybe 10, 20 students, they are writing an essay, and they're all done. They're going to hand in, hand in them over to this uh, teacher. Teacher uh, carefully, meticulously, uh, you know, checking uh, all the answers, and then uh, he is actually arriving uh, at a conclusion that all are getting uh, 80 or 90 marks. But when you specifically looking into the context, the flow of the factors, the brainstorming part, these essays are really different. But they all have addressed a common subject so that they are getting the same equal mark. Right? So this is this is something which is really same to that uh, Vipaka thing. But in the Vipaka thing, Vipaka result could be different. But in this case, everyone is getting the same mark. But uh, let's say few people are doing uh, a good thing, maybe a dana, the same dana, but each one is having different thoughts of you know, future expectations. May I be born in a heaven? May I uh, cut down on my uh, uh, dosa moment? Greed, anger, and uh, ignorance. Right? May I become wealthy in this life itself? May I become more popular? Because I am now giving my stuff. May I get tax exemption from the government? <laughs> May I get political credits? May I become more popular among my friends, uh, colleagues and other people. See, the same thing, but people never share with you, but they are having, they are creating, constructing within themselves about uh, their final, whatever the results, expectation stuff, right? <coughs> So-called rewards. So then would you think that they will be having the same thing? <laughs> no. So as I told you, uh, so the first thing is, uh, individuality and then circumstances. And so we're going to talk about karma in detail at the end. So we need to, uh, you know, first finish talking about the five laws. So karma niyama, that means intentional actions, thoughts and words. And then what is dhamma niyama? What is dhamma? So dhamma has multiple meanings in the Buddhist teachings. There's a PhD done by a scholar Colgate University, Dhamma and its multifaceted mean, meanings. It's a PhD. What are the meanings of Dhamma? Let's talk about the different meanings. So the first meaning is teachings of anybody. Dhamma of Jainism, Dhamma of Hinduism, Dhamma of Buddha. Right? Even Christians can say. If they want. In singular, you know, Christo Dharma, you know, you can talk about it. Differently. So this is one context. So basically, teachings of anybody, any you know acceptable uh, teacher, 
Second meaning is Dhamma in the context of experience. Where do we find that? Mano, Pupang, Gama, Dhamma. What is Dhamma in that context? Experience. All the experiences are made of mind. So how do you explain experiences in that context? When there is Sanya, perception, and Vedana, feelings, and then what happens? You are creating Sankaras, fabrications of formations. So in that context, when you, uh, when you have perception about anything, plus feelings, then you are uh, unintentionally or intentionally creating experiences or dharma. It is dharma. So someone can say my dharma, not like substitute, substitute actually dharma for experience in English. <laughs> my dharmas are different. That is my experience. It could be it's, it could be hands-on experiences, right? And you are really conscious of what you are doing. That is one other context. <coughs> Another context is true nature of anything. So what's the dhamma of, of this mic, the real nature of the mic? So this is a, an, an amalgamation of the elements. There's solidity, and if it is melted, you, you get to see that there's fluid, and if you can observe this in a few hours, if I keep talking until 12 a.m., you get, you get to see that it's, 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 getting, it's getting heated, and then there's motion, how is my speech getting encoded, decoded into speakers? I don't know where they are, right? So th they are the main four elements in, in the Buddhist teachings, right? And Buddha also added another two elements, Akasa Dhatu and Vinyana Dhatu, in a sutra called Dhatu Yubanga Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya. Anyway, so those are the four elements. So Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vai, right? So every Sankara has four elements. What is a Sankara? Sankara also has multiple meanings. Right? Now Buddha says before he passed away, why Dhamma, Sankara, Appamadi, and Sampati? All the Sankaras are subject to change. So then please, hurry up. There's no time. Think that this is, you know, keep today is your last day, right? Do you think like that? <laughs> no. Way too far, right? We think so. Anyway, sankhara means anything that is made out of something else. So we are, are we sankharas? Yes. So I am a sankhara because I am made out of my parents. Is this a sankhara? Yes. It's made out of whatever the elements. We all are sankharas. What is a sankhara? something that is not made out of anything, that is Nibbana. Make sense? Okay. So now, when, when we talk about Dhamma Niyama, what Dhamma Niyama means is that the true nature of anything, so the true nature of anything means there are a few concepts. The, the main concept that Buddha talks about with Dhamma Niyama is Anatta concept. That's the main concept in the Buddhist teaching. What is anatta? Before the Buddha, there was this con concept called atta concept, right? There's, a, there's an eternal, everlasting uh, soul that keeps going from one uh, life to the other life, right? So what is anatta? Huh? Is it in Mandarin? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Okay, non-self. Oh, not self too, right? Okay. Now the problem is, how do we understand this with the, the conventional self? We have a self, right? Do we have a self? Conventionally. Conventionally. Yeah, conventionally we have a self because if you don't think you are you are a self, you will not brush your teeth. <laughs> you will not take care of you. You will not take care of your family. Yes. You are there. But you know that this is just a, con a convention. But in the real sense, you know, this is, this is not a self. 
I can I or we can say I mean myself. Right? Ahankara, mamankara. Right? So this is the true nature of anything in our life, in the universe. Right? So when someone is going to die, it could be from Uttaniyama, non-living matters. It could be from uh, Bijaniyama, because trees have to die. We have to die one day as a, as a uh, process from evolution. And it could be from Kama. And it, it is also because it's the true nature of the life. Right? It's not a very old mind stuff, right? It's, a true, it's the true nature of our life. We were born and we get to live, we get to get sick, we get to get, uh, how do you call, uh, you know, uh, grow positively and negatively. I don't say positively. <laughs> and then we get to die one day. So that is Dhamma Niyama. So true nature of anything. And the last Niyama is called Law on uh, Chitta, Law on Mind and Related area so now in in buddhism mind thought and consciousness and these are three areas don't con get confused with these three now in the abhidhamma we know they talk about chitta in different uh, you know ways and manu in a different context and vijnana which is called consciousness in different ways if you go to Dhammapada, Buddha talks about mind to be chitta. But in English, there's a, an issue. What's the issue in English? They talk about one mind. In Buddhism, there are many minds. It's not actually, uh, uh, you know, grammatically friendly uh, because there couldn't be many minds unless you talk about many people, <coughs> minds of many people. So anyway, so chitta is the party word that Buddha uses to talk about uh, thought. Mind is a dislike thing. In the mind, we see that thoughts arise, right? And Abhidhammikas, they talk about something else called chaitasika, mental factors. They say thoughts and the mental factors arise together, exist together, perish together, take the same object. That's, a, that's an Abhidhamika explanation. Uh, Abhidhamikas are the senior Theravada monks uh, who produce Abhidhamma when they saw the Mahayanic explanations go really hardcore. They had to conform. See, there are some issues in the Polikai, so we had to, you know, sort of like compete in a way, and they were able to make that happen. I'm not saying that they are not true, they are okay, they are good, they are friendly with the Nikayas, but they were uh, compilations from the senior monks and later. Anyway, so mind is a dislike, dislike thing. We have mano because we have senses. Uh, as I told yesterday, uh, piece, of, piece of eyes, piece of ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. There's mind. So it's a dislike thing. So mind uh, and chitta, Buddha uses the word called chitta. What about vinyana? So this is a very confusing uh, word in the teachings. What is Vinyana? In the Yoga Chara philosophy, uh, we get to know there are eight types of consciousness. Right? Now, uh, the first uh, six, I guess, they are uh, the consciousness types that we already know from the Madhupindika Sutta in the Majjhimanikai. What are they? Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness and mind consciousness. I, I think you know how the consciousness makes up. Right? I will give you an example. As in the as in the Madhupindika Sutta in the Majjhimanikai, right? So when let's take the first uh, uh, sense, right? So the eyes, piece of eyes, take the object called images. When there is this piece of eyes plus the images, then what happens? Then there is this, this, uh, this idea called chakuvinya, which is called eye consciousness. So every time when the sense and its objects getting amalgamated, the immediate thing that happens is there is a consciousness arising. Right? 
So those six type of consciousness are the first six consciousness that the Yogacara, one of the Buddhist, uh, you know, uh, recension uh, schools talk about. Because I I I, I was using uh, Yogacara because we don't get to see a lot of consciousness types in the uh, Nikayas. So there is no issue. There is no split action. So the seventh consciousness that they talk about is Anumiti Vijnana. Anumiti Vijnana means consciousness whereby you guess things. Do we guess things in our life? Do we guess on people? Do we guess on situations? Oh, I know that guy today. They're going to be a blast. Not the blast, explosion, right? <laughs> Singer. I know. I know that actress. I know that uh, whoever that, uh, you know, famous person. Maybe skip person. Maybe a bad person. I know that bad person. On that day, he made a big issue at that uh, time, right? So you are uh, guessing on uh, situations, things, people, based on your past experiences with uh, those people uh, at that time. So Yogacara Buddhist school, they take it as a consciousness. Now the most important consciousness is the last consciousness, the eighth one. What is that? Aleya Vinyana. What is Aleya? Place. Aleya means place in Sanskrit. We call Vidyalaya, the place of learning. Aleya. So store consciousness, which you call base consciousness. In, in which all the other consciousness types arise, exist, and perish. That's very interesting. So now this is what traverses when you die into the next life. They call it Ale Vinyana. In the Theravada teachings we talk, we consider it as Bhavanga Vinyana. When you die, what happens? Uh, your Bhavanga Vijnana, O Stock Consciousness, O Ali Vijnana, that traverses from this body into another Nama Rupa. So anyway, the point here is uh, to talk about Chitta, Chitta Niyama. So now you, are, now you get to know mind, which is called Mano, Chitta, which means thought, and Vijnana, uh, which means consciousness, they all are considered as whatever the changes, situations happen with all these three are taken as the uh, Chaitanya. Now, the, the point that we were talking is that karma plays one-fifth of this whole circumstances. Does it make sense to all of you? Okay. Now we're going to talk about some of the teachings whereby Buddha talked about karma. Let's take one very famous sutra, Chuna Kama Vibhanga Sutra. I think you all may have read about this sutra. What does it say? He was talking to a man called Subha and then saying, okay, he was asking why, okay, his, he had some questions. He had, uh, I guess, seven questions about uh, differences about people, individuals, beings in the world. Why there are individuals, beings, who are living longer and why some beings are not able to live longer which is called Digayuka Appaika why there are beings who are sick all the time they have a lot of complaints I have this thing, that thing I want to see the doctor it's okay, right? but that's, the, that's their true nature why there are some individuals who complain less, who getting sick uh, lesser than the other uh, people. Why there are individuals who are very beautiful? Why, why some are not? Why some are well accepted, recognized everywhere they, are, where they go? Why some are not? Why some individuals are, uh, you know, now, he was talking with the contemporary Indian context, like with the caste system in India, you know. It is still regarded as a big thing in their life. Why some beings are born into high caste? Why some beings are born into low caste? 
why some beings are wise, why some beings are very stupid, dull. And Buddha said, Kama. Now the problem that the scholars and non-scholars made was, they forgot one word in this explanation. I'm going to tell you, what was that? Buddha was using, Ekacho, Ekacho Ittiva Pusu. And they forget about it. They translated, that is making everybody generic to this explanation. So everybody who is having a longer life, they have done the same thing. Everybody who has a shorter life, they haven't done bad things. That's pretty wrong. Buddha used the word called ekacho sam. Some males and some females who are living longer because of this. Some males and some women who are living shorter because of this. Why I am bringing up this at this point is, now there is a big conversation going on about karmic violence. What is karmic violence? Look at the people who are handicapped, who have some issues, who are dying uh, sooner than us, who don't seem beautiful in the, in the traditional explanations, who are not that accepted, popular, who are not wise or dull. Right? So then what happens with many people is that if they wrongly take this explanation, they're going to judge each circumstance from that analysis. Okay, he died from an accident because he had killed a lot of beings in the past lives. This is the issue. You are handicapped because in the last, oh, in the previous lives, you cut someone's limbs off. So where is that peaceful society that can uh, exist? Because we are living in this life with a society. So if you're going to interpret all these situations with that kind of uh, an explanation, you are making big violence actually. Not everybody is beautiful. Not everybody is ugly. That's why they say uh, it is the behold, right? Not that there is a traditional way of looking at people. Everybody is beautiful, but it is from the angle from the behold, right? Sometimes some silly people live longer. Good people die faster. Who talks about it? <laughs> right? Good people who are really wise, they are dying sooner. So a dull, stupid person can interpret, hey, I'm living longer than that guy, see? This is the problem. So there is this karmic violence thinking. That's one area. The other area is that uh, we, we need to talk about karma should not be misused. It's, it's not a free pass to kill someone. It's not a free pass to... Uh, you know, bully someone, torch someone. For example, as I said to you, because it's an, it's an intentional thing, nobody knows, uh, you only know what you did, so you have to be very true to yourself, and very honest to yourself. So those are two, uh, you know, good discussions uh, nowadays about karma. So our uh, main point in today's discussion was karma, is not everything. Now I'm going to ask you a little bit with one other sutra. Maha Kamma Vibhanga Sutra. Now they say the shorter explanation of the karma is given in the Chula Kamma Vibhanga Sutra and the longer uh, analysis of karma was given from the Maha Kamma Vibhanga Sutra. In the Maha Kamma Vibhanga Sutra, Buddha talks about four kinds of people. Okay. Who are they? The first type of people there are people, individuals, who have done a lot of good things, but when they die, they go to bad places. Why is this? And there are the second type of people. There are bad people, very bad people. When they die, they go to good places. I think you never heard about, about this too, right? 
And the rest of the explanation is what you already know. There are good people who go to good places, and there are bad people, they go to bad people. Now you think about it. it's not linear. So karma is not linear. You can't say, I did good, I'm gonna head off to a good place. I did bad, uh, I'm gonna go to a bad place. But good begets good, bad begets bad. Those two are still there. But it's not still inclusive. There are another two. And Buddha then explains why those two odd things happen because of the last moment. We call it uh, asana kama, right? The death proximate kama. You may do a lot of good things, but when you die, that, that moment, you don't know what time. If you get upset, if you get uh, obsessed, if you don't have the four establishments of mindfulness, mindfulness on body, mind, uh, feelings, what else? Dhamma, mindfulness on mental uh, uh, elements, then what happened? You are not passing the test. So how do we get ready for that? We don't know when we die, unless you uh, having a predetermined death from a jury. <laughs> In countries. In countries where that is allowed. Anyway, so what we can do is that we have to treat every moment to be a preparatory moment for this thing. We have to be mindful <coughs> with uh, all these four. So that's why Buddha says some individuals who have done good may go to a bad place. See what happened to uh, Kosala Malika. What happened to her? She was the one who gave the biggest dana ever for the Gautama Buddha. What happened to her? She did a bad thing, which you will find on the internet. <laughs> and uh, what happened? She was boning in one of the bad places for a week. And on the eighth day, she was back to normal. See? So if karma is linear, if good begets good, then these things would have not happened. Kosar Malika should have born in the best place. She gave the best dana. So I'm not saying to stop that, <laughs> keep doing that. That's not the issue in here. The issue was that bad thing popped up in her mind at the last moment. That was the problem. And also, Buddha talks about another thing with this topic. He was talking about the neutralization of bad karma, which not a lot of people would like to hear. Why? Because they don't know. <coughs> What happened to Angulimala? Huh? He was a Ahinsa, right? What happened to him? He was the best guy in the class, smartest guy. And the other students were really jealous about the smartness. And what they did, they fabricated. What they fabricated? Looks like you don't know the background story. You know that they killed, he killed people. What they fabricated? They told the teacher, Ahinsaka, the smartest guy in the class, even though he's smart, is having an external affair with your wife. He got really mad. And then he commanded. Okay. At that time, uh, upon the completion of the school, every student has to uh, you know, pay tribute to the teacher. So you're going to give an early tribute to me? The tribute is that you're going to give me a necklace, which has thousand fingers. Okay. He said, I'm ready for that. But the problem is that, and he became an Arahant because Buddha intervened. He was a smart guy. He became an Arahant and then he was experiencing some pains when he was going on Pindapada. People pelted stones at him because they were really, uh, you know, uh, really unforgetful about what happened with Angulimala. And then, but someone can argue, how come he was able to become an Arahant? Not the good things that he did in this life, but the good things he has been doing in the past lives. Right? As we talked Paramita yesterday, someone can think, 
Okay, I'm going to be an Arahant this life. It's good, but if you take a look at the you know, context of Paramitas, <coughs> we may need to do each Paramita in many, many lives. Right? But that doesn't mean that uh, you need to be discouraged. But it is what? That, if, if not, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bodhisattva, our Bodhisattva could have been uh, the Buddha uh, much earlier, right? So he had to perform, execute all the Paramitas. But anyway, Venerable Anguli Bada could, he could mitigate his karma. He was able to neutralize the big extent, big extent of the bad karma. There are many other uh, examples. In one of his sutras, Buddha says, in the Lohanapala Sutra in Anguttara Nikaya, he was explaining uh, this thing, how to neutralize a bad karma, with an example. What's the example? Uh, someone is to put a, a small amount of salt into a glass of water. And then he was asking what would happen to the glass of water. It will be salty in a moment. And then he was questioning if someone is to put the same amount of salt into the Ganges in India. Would the river of Ganges become saltish? salty? Why? The volume of water is higher than the, body, uh, the amount of salt. At that time, people get, uh, get to drink water from Ganges, which is fatal now. Don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Buddha was you know, suggesting uh, you know, a glass of water and Ganges. Right? Anyway, now Buddha was trying to say, if some, we, every, we, we are not actually perfect, everybody of us. We are perfectly imperfect in our life. But socially, there is a picture that we need to be perfect. It's okay. We need to do the best out of everything. But truly speaking, we are perfectly perfect. In that context, we may have done bad karma, even slight or small karma. Even gossip to someone. Right? Even idle chatter. Even, uh, you know, uh, you know, came up with a bad thought. Right? Which is really uh, unavoidable at some point. That means we may all have done some, some karma, right? And Buddha says, no problem. What you have to do is that you need to do a lot of good karma, especially mindfulness of body, mindfulness on uh, feelings, mindfulness on uh, dhamma, and mindfulness on uh, kaya, chitta, vedana, and uh, dhamma. All these four mindfulness. So then, you will be neutralizing uh, bad karma. That doesn't encourage any fresh beginner to do bad karma. <laughs> Don't take it wrong. Right? So now you understand the karma and how it plays. There is always a chance that an opportunity for us to think about. Karma is not everything. Karma is one thing, but since we are we are not really into the level where an Arahant or the Buddha can see what's really going on. We never know how the, how the specific action, the result, uh, makes up. Now, if someone asks, okay, there's a successful person, how he made up that success? We might say, okay, in the previous life, we may have different arguments, but only the Buddha or an Arahant can see what really went on what really went on for that person to be successful. Because the maturity is very confusing. It's not up for a normal individual like us. So that's why don't try to come up to, uh, you know, uh, sudden decisions to define, interpret someone else or your uh, circumstances. Because they are really different. They are only up to that kind of a person. So when you need to know a specific effect or a result, don't just go by the specific deed itself. Because deed plus the individuality, the mindset, mentality of the person, and also uh, the specific situations where that particular activity was committed to execute it, they all affect for the maturity. So then you can say everything happens or has been happening, will be happening as a consequence of I think that makes, uh, 
you know, this topic. Now I think we would uh, go for a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, you can uh, ask me the questions. Because I met somebody, yeah. uh, he she doesn't like uh, in the blessing time, may you have a long life. What if I may have a long life with a lot of sufferings? So I should have a quality life. Yes. So that people are differently thinking, but majority will be thinking the same way as you do. So it's, it's, good, to, it's good to live longer, according to some people, but some may have a different idea too. It could be, could be. It's not the single reason. I, I don't even see a long life. It's, you know, it's not, not that I don't have a long life. It's not about the version or anything like that. I, I really have contemplated this. If I die now, that's fine. You know, uh, I hope whatever I've done, my, all my days, Well, that's how you think. Yeah, in that sutra, Buddha talks about why some why some people are uh, living longer. Why some people are living longer. So our point was to talk about why some people are living longer. Why we should not define everybody's longevity based on karma, because there is this teaching called five laws. Right? Someone can argue, I'm living in a nice country, which has better standards. Right? So government takes care of us, the health of better is so fine. Why would you not think that situation leads to that longevity too? It could be. Why not? You may argue that it could be my past karma. Yes, it could be too. So our point was to talk about these different multifaceted reasons which lead one to be like this and that. Make sense? Okay. Yes. That is how it was interpreted, but it could be different when it is going through the maturity process. Maturity process could be having two, three lows, right? But Buddha simply takes it as one of the uh, one of the five. But when you take the last final situation, it could be uh, two of them, three of them, one of them. If we just cut, it could be uh, karma and something else. <coughs> Well, everybody is having Just to something that. really okay. remarking in his other life. For example, uh, someone may say that I did this big donation. No, but just to make the person remember. Oh, for someone who is actually have who is who is bed bounded. Yeah, just, okay. just, just to continue reminding. Yeah, you can. Is you that can. a good approach? That's a good approach because he, his his he's frail, weak. 
he she may not have uh, a situation where he himself he himself can think about what he she's been doing so far so somebody else uh, is good to uh, remind that you did this thing that thing so try to uh, think more about that side otherwise he she will be going into the bad side that's pretty easy to go right what else can you if you think that person is frail bit bounded i guess uh, you know, convincing that person in whatever the good ways. Uh, maybe you can create an atmosphere where that person is living with uh, dhammic uh, things, maybe uh, playing a dhamma video, uh, maybe uh, inviting monks to, you know, have more conversations, uh, chanting, you know, they all work, you know. It's pretty individualistic, you know. You can't say one thing, you know, so try everything. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Giving dana, uh, like giving to a monk and giving to the homeless person, giving to an animal. Is there? It's like percentage. You give it to a monk is better than <laughs> homeless Just person. Think of that. To the animal. Okay. Well, I would like to specifically address that question uh, in the common sense and in the textual base idea section. In the Vedama Sutta of Anguttara Nikaya, Buddha talks about <coughs> how the uh, Vipakas getting maturated uh, from uh, giving to different individuals. If you give food to an animal, the Vipakas are coming for 100,000 years in your samsaric life. 100,000 years. That's pretty long. Animal doesn't know you, but it's coming on the way. And then, uh, non-virtuous person, a virtuous person, a sotapanna person, sorry, uh, someone who is going on the sotapanna stream in a uh, path, someone who's already sotapanna, or yes, stream in a, someone who is going, now I'm talking about the gradual process, okay? And then, it, at a certain point, Buddha talks about offering dana uh, to the Buddha, and then offering dana to the well-known monks, much higher than offering to the Buddha, and then practicing loving-kindness for a split second, takes over everything. Now, Buddha was telling this to a Brahmin. Not to, not to tell the Brahmin, you only should practice loving-kindness. Don't give money, don't give food to anybody. Right? Because we don't find, uh, we don't look for better rewards when we are giving dana, right? What we do is that, okay, there's an opportunity for me to offer dana. Yes, I should, I should do that. Not that I'm getting this and that. But Buddha was explaining to that Brahmin, this is how it may work, but do not just look at the results of dana when you are giving that. You find each opportunity to be generous after, uh, you know, telling all these examples, Buddha said, uh, make all the opportunity uh, to be a generous person. That's how we should cultivate uh, generosity. Dhamma. It could be a monk, it could be a homeless person, right? Uh, because you may, perhaps, at that time, people were not preparatory. At this time, where right, people can say, okay, I'm going to this temple, offering Dhamma 10 months. At that time, they were on the way. They, they saw a homeless person, okay, I'm going to give whatever I have. And they get to see a mendicant monk with a bowl, arms bowl, okay, I'm going to give food to that monk, right? Now, when, when you have so many opportunities, try to, you know, execute your generosity with all the opportunities, as much as you can. But uh, don't get lost with your money, too. <laughs> Because there's a huge controversy with the Vesantara story, you know. There was a book written by your scholar, The Perfect Generosity of Prince Vesantara. Someone was arguing how come the prince, uh, the king, uh, was to give the royal elephant to the people. It was a royal elephant. It was the government symbol of the people, right? So always you're going to try to find your uh, financial stability. At the same time, trying to execute your generosity in a smarter, better way. 
right? So it's like there will be two genders or less genders. And find that balance to balance out your generosity. But I don't mind if you want it to be two genders. <laughs> Give out your all the money. <laughs> You're getting tax exempt and receipts. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we'll take one last question if there's any. Collective karma. Yeah. Yeah. Collective karma. Uh, someone may argue that when there's a plane crash happened, everybody who died uh, from plane crash may have done a collective karma. Maybe. But some may argue, yes, it could be a weather problem too, right? I remember when that uh, flight from uh, Argentina that was heading to Paris. Uh, you know, uh, there was this uh, mental issue that had. With a, with a pilot, he went to uh, the washroom and then asking uh, one of the crews to uh, take care of the co pilot seat. And then this co pilot, and then this uh, crew member uh, pushed something. <laughs> and then what happened? The flight dropped to the Atlantic Sea. They even couldn't locate the flight eventually. So you can say the collective karmas are always happen that way. It could be a collective karma, it could be a silly decision of somebody, which happens from Chaitanya. Uh, see? Or it could be a weather problem. When they are, you know, taking off with a bad weather, it could happen too. But there is this concept called collective or group karma. I would tell you a nice example, and then we can uh, finalize the talk. Um, there was an accident happened in a city where I stayed. Uh, to, a, to a Sri Lankan person, family. And that uh, person was actually uh, met with a huge accident. She was uh, stopping at a traffic light, and what happened? Uh, she was saying, saying this thing. Suddenly, uh, accelerator was uh, you know, pushed down, and then it smashed into a, a, a bus hole. And uh, she was really, uh, actually, uh, she was having a really hard time. And one of the family members of the of, of that family uh, was was actually sharing this story with me, and I I also went to see this person, and he was telling me how do we go, Bante We think that we may have done a very bad karma in a previous life. The nature of that that bad karma was like we think we may have we may have uh, uh, run a like a cattle or a, you know, farm where we, uh, you know, tortured, assaulted animals for uh, business. That's what uh, happening to all of us because each of the members of that family having uh, car accidents. And then I was questioning back uh, with him, okay, now this family member met with an accident after 20 years. So how do you describe, explain the time, this 20 years of time, that this person did not have an accident? She had good driving record. How do you explain that? That's why I'm saying, don't put everything to karma. Maybe this might have been a bad decision that she made. Maybe she may have uh, did something. Maybe she may have been distracted, right? So do not <coughs> paint everything with the same brush. There may be different, different reasons, right? So the immediate thing that everybody thinks when something bad happens, it is karma. <laughs> this is really bad. That's why we have to think about, are there any mistakes I or we being made here? I think, well, where is our willpower, right? So if we can really think about it, then we can avoid a lot of bad situations, circumstances, rather leaving everything to karma that you don't know, right? Because karma, we don't know. That's why the, the Jain people having a lot of problems. One day when the Buddha was coming down uh, to a place, he saw a lot of Jain, uh, Jain uh, followers. They were, they were, they were uh, suffer themselves. In that scorching sun, they were 
uh, you know, uh, making a fire, and then they were actually, uh, you know, there uh, to uh, compensate for the for the previous karma. And Buddha asked them, okay, you guys are doing this to compensate for the past karmas. How much you have been compensating so far? How much karmas have you been compensating? That's a big problem. We don't know. <laughs> and Buddha asked, how many more karmas that you guys are going to compensate? That too, we don't know. So if you think that you all live into karma, you like James. <laughs> Buddha clearly talked about willpower. Because that is what we can do things now. Uh, are the previous karmas in our control now? No. So then try to be very uh, vigilant and diligent and then uh, get out of this negligent thinking. Uh, I mean, if there are karmas, they will happen. But if we can uh, you know, take care of our mindfulness and we can uh, take care of a lot of other bad karmas that could come to us. Okay, thank you. Oh, there's one question. One last question. You say the last question. <laughs> okay, since you mentioned that not everything is karma. No, I'm saying the Buddha said. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> not everything is karma, but we know that there is such thing as karma. Yeah. Right. There is so, such thing. How you how you explain that this is karma? Yeah. So my question. That's is, a big question too. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the thing that's been pondering me for for some time that if this happened to me is due to my past karma. So does it mean that it's predestined that I'm fated that I have to face this situation that cannot be changed? So how do you explain this thing happened because of my past karma? I don't. That's the problem. So how do you come up to that decision? That's what I'm saying. Uh, that, that's why I have, I'm, I'm waiting to be awakened. I think first, understand. okay, first what you have to do is try to find out why this happened to me in this life. Whether there was a bad, poor decision I made. Whether I went to, went to a wrong place. Whether I am with the bad people. Right? When you don't see that there is a tangible situation that you can't think, okay, this happened. I don't see any any mistake, any anything from my side, then that undefined area could be karma. But still you can put them into karma. And this there is this Arahan, Buddha and person like that can say by uh, looking your back, which you call Pubbe Nivasanasutinyan. They can only say, but you can say. So try to work on your willpower and your life so that you will overcome a lot of things. Okay, yeah. So, so my question is, let's say if it is really karma that is causing me to be in, to face this challenge or to, to get this problem. So my question is, does it mean that it is predestined, fated, and can it be changed? It can be changed. That's why I was talking about neutralization of karma. If you do more good things, you have a greater chance of, uh, you know, mitigating, influencing your karma. Lighten. But, uh, uh, lighten the karma. Lighten. Yeah, you can actually uh, uh, boost your karma, good karma. Never think of the bad karma you did in the past life. You never know what they are, or good karmas too. So always you try to work out your good karmas, improve every day. Let's say you giving that to two months, you're going to improve that to four months. Six, seven, eight months. <laughs> you've been giving thousand dollars, you're going to give it. $3,000. And you've been volunteering three hours, you can actually improve it to eight, nine hours. You can. See? There are a lot of other ways to you know, improve. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. So I think we've come to the end of this evening's um, Dhamma Sherry. That's our bad karma. <laughs> <laughs> But the, yeah, is there a question? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's about yesterday's talk and today's talk. Yesterday, you talked about wisdom as one of the ten parameters. Mm. And in wisdom, you have the three laws of the Tilakana Anatta, Dukkha, and Nicha. Yeah, Anicha Dukkha. Yeah. So the three is together. But here today, and is that really wisdom, or are they the laws of nature which allows you? develop wisdom, that's question number one. And number two, today you talked about, in Chitta Nyama, you talked about 
unknown the mind and chitta the thought. So those are really the laws of the chitta niyama. And I mean, I get confused with the word wisdom being used in yesterday's context and today's context where the mind and the thought are concerned. Did we talk about wisdom today? No, but you yeah. talk about the mind and the thought. Yeah. It's to end that and anatta. So anatta is one of those uh, things that we talked yes. about yesterday. Yes. So is that wisdom that you are talking about here? Well, we were talking about paramitas yesterday. Mm -hmm. Paramitas are cultivations. Uh, and uh, today we talked about anatta in the context of dhamma niyama. Actually, these five are low. These five are lows, and not the wisdom. Actually, but but anatta is always talking about wisdom. It's always wisdom. That's a different section of uh, Buddhism. But in this context, dhamma niyama means understanding the true nature of everything. That is anatta itself, right? But we were talking wisdom separately yesterday. So it can be a wisdom factor. It can be. A it is wisdom. Right? So when you are into true nature of anything, then you are developing wisdom. Most people have taught us what we have learned is that if you understand these three important laws, then you can develop the wisdom. Three important characteristics, characteristics. not laws. Laws are these five. No. Uh, important characteristics. Characteristics of anything. They are not really wisdom as such, but they are built the foundation for you to develop this. Just as you said, dukkha is not a, is not suffering, but it is the dissatisfaction yeah. which may uh, which may cause the arising of suffering. Mm -hmm. So, it, do I take it that is? Well, that is that is the real consistency of anatta concept. Sabbe sankara anicchati yada panyaya pasati. Sabbe sankara dukkhati yada panyaya pasati. Sabbe dhamma anattati yada panyaya pasati. So that is wisdom. That means if someone can see all the sankharas from the dissatisfaction uh, context, if someone can see all the, uh, you know, the dissatisfaction of all the sankharas, that is dukkha. And if someone can see all the uh, mental factors uh, really into the real nature, that is anatta. So that is the basic Buddhist wisdom. But in today's talk, what you talked about is there is this law that should that is existing everywhere. True nature of anything. If you are trying to see the true nature of anything, that is it's that is anatta itself. This is a different context. Okay, so uh, anatta uh, is uh, those three that we talked yesterday. Sorry, uh, the wisdom is those three. Yeah that we talked yesterday, but today's talk, what we talk about, just the anatta concept. But when we talk about anatta concept, it is related to anicca and dukkha too. It's not a standalone practice. Make sense? What was the other question you asked? Well, that those were the two. Okay, the second question? The, the second question was... I, I think Why they are being said differently? Yeah. Because they are being said in different contexts. That's why. Yeah. Because in Buddhism, as I said to you, even the word called Dhamma is multifaceted. In the Dhamma part, the Manobhubhangama Dhamma, and the teaching of the Dhamma, and uh, Dhamma in the Niyamas, laws, they are three different contexts. What about Sankharas? In one context, Sankhara means formations in the, uh, in the uh, Namas. And in the uh, Kusala Kusala analysis, it's going to be good karma. Right? In other context, it's a Mara, one of the Mara. We call Abhisankara Mara. So there are different, different contexts. So we have to understand different, different contexts and then to find out the meaning. Okay. Finally, it's final. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see that you know, from the way the queuing is going, Buddhist Mahavira is in dire need of uh, intellectual monks. Mm -hmm. Bhante, we have to appeal to you to seriously consider 2019 to come again on a longer term. Yes. yes. I came after the eight, nine years, actually. Yeah, after. Let's, yeah. let's go back to that story, because you were here, I think, in 2008, right? <laughs> and I had then uh, invited you to stay and do your master's here, whilst things at Buddhist Mahavihara, but he had an offer, better offer, and he had to leave. But all the same, 
after eight to nine years, you're still back. And I'm so glad that you took my offer and my pleading over Facebook over a few years <laughs> to come here and say a few words to us, but you did it in over two nights. And we are so grateful for that, Bhante. And I hope, and I sincerely plead with you, please consider seriously to come on the longer term, not on the short term, at least a month, month and a half if you can. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we, shall, we shall discuss the terms, but, <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm serious about it because I see the, the thirst for knowledge and you know there's uh, right now, ever since Bhante Pandeji has passed on, we have this whole gap that needs filling. And I've tried my best in the terms of the Dhamma Dynasty to bring monks of some repute and some intellect to Buddhist Mahavir so that we can have this intellectual discourse and let everybody, you know, um, have a wider uh, perspective to Buddhism, not just the, what Bhante Paniji was just talking about all the time. But now you get used to do, at the last few weeks, I think we noticed, you get different speakers with different perspectives. And I think that's what we need, this kind of intellectual discourse. And I think, Bhante, you're one of them that we should seriously consider, if you can. I'm sure you all agree. Yeah. 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 Seriously consider if you have time, uh, we can discuss this. <laughs> But, and thank you, Mandir, for taking time off. I know you're busy. He's just coming from a tour of uh, UK uh, last uh, few weeks ago. 30 days, actually. Yeah, last 30 days he was in England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, oh. France. <laughs> <laughs> now he's here, right? and I think he's going to Sri Lanka after this, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, and then back to Canada. <laughs> yeah. So he's on a flying visit. That's why we need two nights. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so even though you're so busy and traveling, but please do consider Buddhist Mahavira as your second home. <laughs> okay. I will think about it, but I, I have a big, you know, time constraint situation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Let's, let's look up something we'll see. and see how we can yeah. do this. You want to work it out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, but yes. thank you so much. I, I think we're all very grateful for, for you to take your time off. Mm -hmm. And we are really awakened by the last two nights uh, this discourse. Mm -hmm. And I would now like to invite... Share that. Yeah? yeah. No, i just like to invite Bhante uh, Sri to just hand the prayer on behalf of all the devotees, uh, a small Present. little gift. Present. 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 Yeah. <laughs> on behalf of the Buddhist community here in Buddhist Mahavira, and take it. So now we'll come to the sharing. Yeah, sharing. Sure. It's time to uh, share all the good karmas we've been uh, collecting so far. So may all the good karmas uh, you've been uh, collecting by uh, participating in the Buddha Puja before prior to the Dhamma talk, and then listening to the Dhamma talk and uh, engaging in the discussion of the Dhamma talk. Be shared by all the departed relatives. May they be happy and peaceful. May they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nati nan go to Sukita, Montu Nathu, Idam me nati nan go to Sukita, Montu Nathu, Idam me nati nan go to Sukita, Montu Nathu. May all the uh, devas, brahmas, and all those uh, you know, non humans sharing all these good karmas, may they protect and bless all of you. <coughs> Venerable monks, uh, devotees, friends who could show up today, who couldn't show up today, but there are many people who are watching uh, uh, on the internet too. So may all they be uh, protected, blessed by the devas, brahmas, and all those non humans. May they protect, for, uh, may they protect and bless for uh, quality life, uh, good health, uh, education, career, and all prosperity. May they all be happy, uh, and at the same time, may they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana as well. Give a sadhu, 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 sadhu. Ittavata cha amhehi sambhatan punya sampadan sabbe deva. Sabbha sampatya siddhya ittavata cha amhehi sambhatan punya. Sabbe bhuta anumodan tu sabbha sampatya siddhya ittavata cha amhehi sambhatan punya sampadan. Sabbe sattva anumodan tu. Finally, let's make a great wish. May all the good karmas we've been having so far help. After yoga session, 